Hold it. One of them's on the move. Just give him a moment to settle down. Right, there's nothing in your way now. I shouldn't be too long about it if I were you. Splendid. The big one ain't moved a muscle yet. Right, now put the lantern down and get your envelope ready. Or you'll be all fingers and thumbs, if you'll pardon the expression. Neatly done. Back you go now, Thackeray. You've forgotten your lantern. Don't get cocky now. Drugs wear off, you know, and tails can be just as vicious as teeth. There you are, Inspector. I told you as a man of action, that's Scotland Yard training for you. Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, the curator called me in at half past nine. We closed the cavern to visitors immediately. As soon as I spotted the hand, I decided to call the yard in. It was too much for my boys to handle. You mean, not enough? Quite. Where the rest of the body is, you may well conjecture. Ah, oh, blimey, Sarge. The cases don't get no easier. Yes, it's terrible. A terrible infliction, Sergeant. Newspapers made enough of discovering the hand in the crocodile tank. Heaven only knows what lewd copy they'll make of this. It won't be much good for the town at all. Why well, no human nature said they'll have to put on extra trains to cope with the rush. It's remarkable, Sergeant. I cannot for the life of me work out how you picked the fish market as the location for the crime. The hand gave us the clue. Finding sand under the fingernails wasn't too strange here in Brighton. But fish scales, another matter altogether. Fish market seemed the obvious place. Quiet spot away from trippers and convenient for dismembering. Yes, of course. Quite, Sergeant. Uh, how many items are unaccounted for? Leg and arm. Oh, and the head. The uh, only article of clothing that we found was this uh, black seal skin jacket. Well, Inspector, there's a lot more digging to be done before we'll know who she was, let alone who murdered her. Uh, in connection with the newspaper article, sir, the appeal for assistance in identifying the body. A woman, fair skin, small to medium build. Well? I believe I know who she is, sir. A chair for the gentleman, Constable. Oh, yes, thank you, yes. Uh, yes, thank you. Yes. Yes, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, my, my name, sir, is Albert Moskop, uh, and I, I should first explain that I am, like yourself, a scientist. I, it is my profession. You see, I have a small optical shop in London, and I, I specialise in lenses. Uh, but I am truly fortunate in that it is also my hobby to, to observe. Mm. Observing a lady seems the hobby of a great many here in Brighton. No, I observe scientifically, sir. The lady, sir. Who do you believe she is? Uh, Mrs. Zena Prothero. Friend of yours? Yes. Uh, 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 no. Uh, no, no, not a friend. An acquaintance? Uh, yeah. uh, yes. Yes, yes, we met on the beach, but not by accident. I, uh, I, 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 I planned we should meet. You had seen her before? Yes, uh, through one of my telescopes. Uh, my Suffolk Ranger field instrument with a magnification of 30 diameters from the very first moment she came into my field of vision i was i was utterly bewitched by her it was something so captivating so delightful about the way anyway there was this tiresome interruption mr Mosscrop, much as i enjoy romances but i have to tell you the full story sergeant i, I felt sure i'd lost her until i remembered the towel what towel was this, sir? Uh, well, you see, the lady was carrying a striped towel, and a thought suddenly occurred to me that if, if I could trace the towel, I would have a definite link with her. 
Obviously, you have the makings of a detective, Mr. Moscroft. Uh, well, I did manage to trace it, but I must confess I was rather dismayed when I saw it had been retrieved by a young gentleman. But now I was determined to see the thing through, and impulsively I followed the young man. Well, eventually, I caught up with him at the aquarium. Well, coming as I did from the sunlight, I was temporarily unable to make out anything in the gloomy interior. But there did seem to be a small commotion at the far end of the hall. There's no need, really, sir. The boy wanted to see the brutes for himself. It's all part of his education. Honestly, Bridget, anyone would think from your behavior I was trying to get rid of the child, like someone in the police reports. You'll have to keep a check on yourself, my girl. You'll get us into no end of trouble. Won't you, young Jason? Come on up. There's Papa. Oh, I'm obliged to you, sir. Sixteen's a trying age. Well, I'm sure there was no harm in Master Guy's actions. Oh, well, boys but... will be boys, miss. I expect his mother finds him quite a handful. I remember I was at his age. Oh, Mrs. Provro's lucky there. Oh, uh, Mrs. Uh... Mrs. Provro, which well, is only his stepmother. He's the doctor's son by previous marriage. Don't ask me which one. He don't keep his wives very long, does he? I must go and collect Jason for his lunch. Well. You're a gentleman, sir, and I'm obliged for your help. Oh, no trouble, miss. No trouble at all. The following morning, I saw Dr. Prothero with the same woman I'd observed at the aquarium. It was obvious he was flirting with her, and for her part, she was encouraging him quite flagrantly. Well, that afternoon, I used my Negretti and Zambra. You use your what, sir? What telescope, Constable? Oh, yes, yes, it's, it's my most powerful instrument. Well, almost immediately, I focused on the child Jason. He was with a complete stranger, Sergeant, and I thought, heavens, the boy's been abducted. Abducted, Mr. Moscrop? You do have a suspicious mind. Uh, well, there was no sign of the family, or Bridget, his nursemaid. I approached the large lady who was throwing the child about in the most alarming fashion. I introduced myself and attempted to engage her in conversation, a, a rather formidable task as she was very uncommunicative. But it did become apparent that she had no idea of Jason's parentage or even his name. However, after careful questioning, I gained her confidence sufficiently for her to tell me she simply minded the child regularly for his brother and sister, who she pointed out on the next beach. But imagine, Sergeant, not knowing who the child was. And how she could possibly interpret their behaviour as that of a brother and sister is, is beyond me. They were kissing, Sergeant. Kissing on the beach. A 16-year-old boy and a servant girl. I, I was shocked. Well, at least the child had not been abducted, Mr. Moscrop. Uh, no, no, that is true, Sergeant. Uh, but he was uh, later on in the day. Was he by Jove? Who by? Um, by me. I had somehow to introduce myself to Mrs. Prothero. I felt she was in need of a friend. So you abducted her child? Uh, yes, but just for five or ten minutes. He was playing on the beach near an upturned boat, right out of sight of the family. And I, I lured him away but by means of, of one of my telescopes. And, and he, he followed me on, onto the esplanade. Then uh, when he s started bawling, I carried him back to his nursemaid. Jason! Oh. What do you mean, nothing? You can't mean it. Jason Prothero lost without trace. His minor state of advanced hysteria. The beach about to be turned over stone by stone. You arrive with a child in your arms and describe it as nothing. Oh. He's a wilful defeat, I grant you, but you, you're a hero, Mr. Moscrop. Mr. Mosscrop. It's a name I shall never forget. Now understand that I'm utterly grateful. Words. Words cannot suffice. I was on the brink of despair, Mr. What do you say it was, darling? Uh, Mosscrop. Mosscrop. It was providential that I recognized your servant, ma'am. Uh, we met briefly at the aquarium. 
darling, as far as I was concerned, he was almost food for the fishies. Where did you find the little brat? Oh, up on the groin, towards the pier. Groin. Suppose he'd fallen. You've saved his life by heaven. You've saved my son's life. This gentleman is a hero, Bridget. And a saint. And you, my girl, are the other thing. What were you thinking of letting my child wander off and all but kill himself? Go on, go and find Guy and tell him what's happened. Bring that girl. Now, Mr. Moorcroft. Uh, Moscrop. Moscrop. Now, Mr. Moscrop. Oh, I'm so grateful. Shall we? Shall we sit down for a moment? Oh, I have the advantage of you. My name is Prothero, Zena Prothero. You might have known me better as Zena Delamere when I was on the boards in the Pearls of Paul Perrault. I was the girl that sat on the cardboard moon in the Pearl Girl number. Huh? Well, such is fame. Are you a resident of Brighton? No, my dear, more's the pity. No, my husband Gregory is a doctor with the practice in talking. He escaped for three weeks. We're staying at the Albemarle. It's comfortable. It's monstrously expensive. You're here for the season, I expect. Oh, no, no, no. Just three weeks, like you. I'm one of those deplorable individuals who can't bear to be away from their business for more than the minimum. It, uh, it betrays a lack of confidence, I'm afraid. Oh, Skittles, darling. You're conscientious, like Prothero. You know, even, even on his holidays, he will insist on visiting his former patients. Yes. I mean, this very afternoon he's with a poor soul in Rottingdean, actually. There's dedication for him. Between ourselves, he doesn't really approve when I bring the children on the beach. Well, it's not the thing in the season, is it? Personally, though, I find the scene quite irresistible. Fair. There's my lower class origins revealed. <laughs> Visiting a poor soul indeed. Uh, I was, uh, I, I was, uh, I, I was in a quandary, Sergeant. Uh, should I tell Mrs. Prothero the truth? Uh, well, the opportunity did present itself on the Friday uh, when I met her quite by chance. Uh, the town was being decked out, ready for the celebrations. The return of the heroes of Tel El Kabir. Uh, yes, indeed, Sergeant. I had bought young Jason a wooden crocodile, and Mrs. Prothero was quite overcome by my generosity. Oh, you are a naughty girl walking down the promenade. You are saucy boy, and he says I am a car. <laughs> if Guy's pa knew he was bathing for the beach, I don't know what he'd do. Prothero says the water's contaminated, but I can't stop the wretched boy from going in, so I just don't try. He gives the impression of being very strong-willed. You see, he suffers from asthma. We try not to cross him for fear of bringing on an attack. Brother has made a great study of the subject, you know. He's even written papers about it, about vaccinations, injections. Or are they the same thing? I don't know. <laughs> Guy's natural mother used to suffer from asthma. Your husband was married before, was he? <gasps> Twice, darling. Emily, she died of smallpox. Solicitor's daughter, good diary. Set him up in practice. Zelda was the second. She was one of the Pelhams. There were thousands of acres somewhere. Well, she ate some bad fish. Killed her overnight. Then I came along. Actress. What do you think that? Married a bit beneath his station of me, didn't you, Oh, take the feet away for a while, Bridget. That girl. Got no idea how to keep a child amused. Father must have been off his heavenly engaged. But she didn't do no wrong in his eyes. None whatsoever. And you know, once his mind's made up, he's an implacable. Guy's the same. That must make life difficult for you. Difficult? If my lips weren't seen. I could tell you a tale more harrowing than it, many, many dreadful. I don't know why I'm telling you all this, Mr. Moiscrop. 
You don't want to listen to a woman's nonsense. No, it's not nonsense at all, ma'am. I count it a privilege to listen to you. I only wish there was some way in which I could help you with the crisis you speak of. Forget about it. Forget about it. An unspeakable thing, unique to our family. We will say no more about it. Anyway, after all, it is our holiday, isn't it? The regiment's returning from Egypt tomorrow. Won't Jason adore the uniforms? Oh, yes, I'm sure he will, ma'am. Uh, have you been invited to the civic reception this evening? I didn't know when it had been arranged. Actually, I'm not my best in the evenings. The sea air tires you, I expect. Quite the reverse. Rothrow says my brain is overactive. You must be right, because I can't sleep without the preparation he gives me. Isn't it convenient being married to a doctor? He gives you a sleeping drug? Yes, every night. Ever since the trouble I mentioned, well, I didn't mention. You see, since then, the least little thing makes me in the most nervous state. Simply sitting in the same room with Prothero and Guy is enough to start my hand shaking. Isn't it ridiculous? So you take the potion to alleviate your nervous manifestations? Exactly. And it's miraculous. I'm unconscious in no time at all. Brother suggests usually that I take it immediately after dinner. By eight, I'm insensible. You don't think it's dangerous, do you? <laughs> what kind of sleeping draft does he give you? That's what worries me, my dear. I don't know. Brother doesn't tell me, and I don't like to ask. I shouldn't like him to think I don't trust him. Perhaps somebody else could help you. Darling. Charming. It was so relieved by mind. I'd completely forgotten you were a medical man. Well, medicine's not really my field, ma'am. Optics, you understand. Oh, yes. Optics. An optical man, exactly. Oh, that would be so... Oh, look what I've done. <laughs> oh, I can't tell you what this means to me. Of course you know about these things. So sweet of you to go through all this trouble. Well, I dare say, if you could obtain a small sample of the solution, I could get it analysed somewhere in the town. Though I'm sure your husband can be depended upon. Oh, so am I, Mr. Mosscrop, so am I. But if your chemist were to discover that the medicine were just a trifle strong, perhaps I could find a way of preparing a weaker solution without offending Prothero. It is just a little unnerving being insensible for 13 hours at a time, you understand. 13 hours? When could you obtain this sample for me? It would have to be done unobtrusively, would it not? Darling, you are so perspicacious. If you... If you were to come to the croquet lawn in the Apple Lawn at two this afternoon, I could get Bridget dressing Jason. Brother who would have been the billy How drone. We shall be exactly like two conspirators. <laughs> I collected the sleeping draft that afternoon and arranged to meet her at 8.30 the next evening with the chemist's analysis. That will be Saturday night. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, the night of the grand ball and civic reception for the regiment at the Dome. And the fireworks show. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, yes, indeed. Uh, I waited in front of the Hotel Albemarle with the formula as arranged. And there was no sign of her. Uh, perhaps it, it had been more difficult for her to slip away from Prothero than, than she expected. Ah. Oh, caught you by surprise, didn't I? You, uh, have you got a formula for my mistress? Oh, well, I had planned to hand it to her in, in person. Oh, you can't, can you? She ain't here. Oh, yeah, I have to tell you. She's sorry she can't come down. She took to bed straight after dinner to please Dr. Prothero. He, uh, he wanted to see her asleep before he left for the ball. Oh, I, uh, I see. Now, don't look so flawed. I know you've taken a fancy to her. I've seen you with them glasses to your eyes, Mr. Mosscrop. And I've seen you on the beach outside the hotel when the mistress don't know you're there. I've seen you watching Dr. P in all through your spyglass. So, you know all about him and the ladies? Uh, yes, well, I, I did observe him out walking with a young woman. Samantha Floyd Whittingham. 
the Colonel's daughter. Mrs. Provro don't know she's been deceived. She never does. Then shouldn't you tell her? I can't afford to cross the doctor. Well, I I'd never obtain another position if he'd give me a bad character. Uh, isn't she at all suspicious? Oh, she's so blind to his doings. He don't even bother to brush the fair hairs off his shoulder. But with that kind of adoring, trusting wife, why kill her? Kill? The formula. You was hoping to find arsenic in it, weren't you? <laughs> Good Lord, the very idea. Take my word for it, he don't need to kill her. He's perfectly content with things the way they are. And for her part, you don't stand a chance. There's only one man for her. That's my master, with all his faults. Well, then uh, perhaps you would kindly convey this to Mrs. Prothero and set her mind at rest. The preparation is, is nothing more sinister than chloral hydrate. Told you we weren't poisoning her. Good God, what was that? Oh, they started to light the skyrocket. Oh, I'm dotty about fireworks. Look, there's guy. That one takes after his father. Not that I'm complaining. Getting nippy out of you. You will uh, remember me too, her. Uh... Oh, she won't need no remembering of you, Mr. Mosscrook. You're not the sort of man she's likely to forget. I warn you. Don't you go telling Mrs. Provero the truth about her husband, because God knows what might be if you do. Now, what time was this on Saturday night, sir? Oh, about nine o'clock, Sergeant. You stay to see the end of the fireworks? Oh, no, I left by 9.30. Uh, pyrotechnics do not impress me over much. Nor me, sir. When did you get back to your lodgings? Do you know, I can't remember. Uh, maybe an hour later. I was in no particular hurry. Ah, but well, possibly your landlady would recall. Uh, no, 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 she didn't see me. I let myself in. Uh, do you take sugar, sir? Oh, yes, four. Yes. But you think it would have been about 10.30? Uh, Yes, yes. Why are you so interested? Got to get my time straight, sir. A lot of reliance is placed on times. And when you got back to your lodgings... Oh, I went straight to bed. What did you do the next day, Sunday? Oh, I, I went to church. I walked on the esplanade. I was surprised not to see Mrs. Prothero on the beach. Why? Oh, the weather was ideal. And Dr. Prothero? Well, I didn't see him until Monday. He lunched at Mutton's with the Colonel's daughter. And afterwards, they walked back to her house in Lewis Crescent. Arm in arm, Sergeant. Have you seen him since? Oh, several times. His routine is inflexible. He rises late, bathes at Brills, lunches at Mutton's. Oh, and yesterday his son Guy joined him for lunch. What about young Jason? You know, I've seen nothing of him, or his nursemaid, or Mrs. Prothero. But then... Do you, do you know, Sergeant, an awful thought has just occurred to me. Uh, you, you, you don't think they could all... No, sir, I don't. I just leave every possibility open. But one thing is certain, if you haven't seen him in four days, they ain't in circulation here, we can depend on it. You know, I, I'd be glad to offer my services as observer. <coughs> <coughs> Much appreciated, sir. But I think you're now entitled to enjoy the rest of your holiday. Uh, then, then, would you like me to bring you Dr. Prothero's published monographs on asthma and such like? You have these in your possession? Well, I had them sent down from London uh, because I... I want to know more about the man. Well, now, that is a coincidence, Mr. Mosscrop. So do I. Oh, sir, but you seem to have the only spare seats in the house. One of them is spoken for. My son is joining me shortly. <laughs> but take the other one if you wish. Capital. Extremely decent. Crips the name. Dr. Provero. Ah, the obligatory turtle soup for me too, please, and a medium sirloin to follow. Your son and yourself here for the season? Yes. Slipping the noose for a while, eh? No, unfortunately, my wife and younger son had to return home. The child was unwell. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Some childish malady? Stomach upset. I told my wife to let the nursemaid take him, but she insisted on going. Did you attend the civic reception on Saturday night? I mean, the ball. Oh, yes, indeed, everyone was there. It was the outstanding event of the season so far. Splendid. 
Must have made a fitting climax to your wife's holiday. My wife is not present. Ah. You took your eldest son? Uh, no, a friend. My wife does not attend evening engagements because of ill health, and Guy has not enough manners for such occasions. I thought we were taking lunch alone. My elder son, Guy. Hello, Guy. Devil kidneys and a large sirloin steak cooked rare. Hurry. You left school? Ask him. It's a sensitive subject at the moment. He's left one and is about to start at another. Don't bother to ask him where. He won't tell you. Not while I'm here. But if I know him, it'll be in the Outer Hebrides. Guy has a well-developed sense of humor, which does not always endear him to schoolmasters. Or his father, on occasion. That's true. When have you treated me with anything but suspicion? You're fearful all the time. I'll embarrass you and your quack theories. You don't so lightly dismiss the efforts I have made to alleviate your attacks, Guy. How can I, when I have a bruise on my arm as big as a half-crown to remind me of my father's loving care. I began to wheeze a bit on Sunday, so he gave me an injection. He might be a specialist on asthma, but he handles the needle like a punt pole. How long do you expect to be in Brighton, Mr. Crib? Oh, Crib. just a few. Surely you're the man from Scotland Yard. The police? Yes. He's investigating the body they dug up on the beach. I read about it in the Argus, Inspector Crib. Sergeant only, I'm afraid. Uh, you're a fly one, Sergeant. Better watch out, Father. He's looking for a murderer. Get home quick and pour all those poisons down the wash basin. Uh, the soup will be sufficient. Actually, it's the identity of the victim I'm more concerned about. I'll find the murderer later. The trouble is, there isn't too much to go on. Woman, small to medium height, wearing a black sealskin jacket. I believe your wife hasn't been seen since Saturday, sir. Perhaps that's because she left for Dorking on Sunday, Mr. Cribb. You accompanied her to the station yourself? No, they took a cab. Your wife, Jason, and Bridget. Good God. Do you even know the name of myself? Did all three of them travel together, sir? Naturally. Well, that's good news, then. But you do understand my concern. The victim was killed not far from your hotel. Would you be so kind as to ask the There were scores of men and women on the front that night. I expect a soldier drank too much and murdered the doxy he was with. He dragged her into one of the lockups and then set to work the next night with a cleaver. There, I've solved the case for you. Well, it's one possibility. Did you watch the fireworks with your stepmother? No, his stepmother was asleep. I never mentioned stepmother. No, she wasn't. She got up to watch the fireworks. No. Yes. But I gave her a sleeping draft. She couldn't have taken it. We watched the display together from her bedroom. I think I is right. Either a soldier or a sailor was the murderer. And the victim? One of the sluts of the town. The front is no fit place to be at night. I need some fresh air. His asthma. Providentially, I'm able to subdue the attacks with atropine if I cannot dispel them altogether. Must be difficult to correct a boy when it's liable to bring on an attack. I will allow that he has abominable manners. But he is chastised like any other boy. I've done all that a Christian father can. And he's starting a new school, you say? We hope so, yes. I wonder if I haven't heard of it. Uh, cancel that, will you? Uh, no, I don't think so. It's a rather small, private academy. I didn't want to be indiscreet in front of the boy, sir. But was it a lady friend you took to the ball? Yes, um, Miss Samantha Floyd Whittingham. A social acquaintance. Oh, that's understood, sir. Did you happen to leave the ball for any part of the evening? Yes, we watched the fireworks. When the ball ended, I drove Samantha to her lodgings in Lewis Crescent. Uh, uh, I was back just before two. Oh, I don't doubt it, sir. Samantha is very much alive, I assure you, sir. I wasn't thinking she was dead, sir. You seem concerned for my wife's safety just now, not, uh, not my uh, friend. Just one more question, if you'll oblige me, sir. You've been very forbearing. Has Bridget been with you long? Six months. Do you think she's completely to be trusted? In what way? Well, not to too fine a point upon it. In matters of morality. <laughs> you really have been keeping a close watch on us, Sergeant. Uh, waiter, Bill. Well, I'll answer you. I may be a forward thinker in this respect, Sergeant, but I don't think it's particularly bad if a 16-year-old boy learns a trick or two to a serving wench. I know I did when I was young. 
You do know that they bathe together. Oh, I suppose I know. But I'm more concerned with the toxic effects of seawater than a bit of spooning on top of the waves. And there's no more to it than that. Of that, I'm sure. No, well, allow me, please. I did intrude on your lunch. <laughs> oh, thank you. And I hope for your sake that Scotland Yard considers that bill a justified expenditure. I'll accompany you part of the way, if I may. Thank you. I assume you are going in the general direction of Lewis Crescent. <laughs> I'm beginning to think it's just as well I haven't done anything criminal, Sergeant. Indeed it is, sir. Otherwise you'd be a very worried man by now, wouldn't you? Hello, hello, hello. What's going on here, then? Shall we concern ourselves with the purpose of our visit, Zachary? How's the door-to-door -door going? Do you know over 100 women left town either Saturday or Sunday? That's over 100 reports they go through. It's a lot of work, Sarge. Well, you seem to be finding ample time for the amusements. Oh, yes. That man Mosbrock called again. Oh, what for? Well, he wanted to see that black sealskin jacket we found. I said he couldn't, of course. I said it was evidence, and if he became a witness, he might be called upon to identify us in court. What did he want with the jacket? Oh, well, he remembered that when he was walking with Mrs. Prothero last Friday, a button came off, and she put it in her pocket. I said I'm sure all the buttons were in place. Anyway, when he'd gone, I checked. None were missing, and nothing in the pockets. Did he say which button it was? The top one. Oh, there, yeah, Sarge. Well, I wouldn't have thought you needed a magnifying glass to prove there isn't a button missing. Interesting. Top button's been sewn on with thinner cotton than the rest. But there are still traces of the holes where thicker stuff's been threaded. Mr. Bosscrop has come to your rescue, Thackeray. Rescue? No more house to house. He's found the lady for us. Found from the diggings. That's right. And sergeant Cribb wants us to look at everything. Gone swimming, is the sergeant? No, he's gone to Dorking. But why? I ain't at liberty to say. Except it's to do with why we came down here, solving the case. <laughs> yeah, that's paper you've got. I handle all the paper, cloth, and metal. You handle the rest. Well, here's another female garter for your collection. <laughs> that old beast could tell a few stories. Listen to this thing. To Mr. Mosscrop, our analysis of the liquid shows it to be a weak solution of chloral hydrate CCL3 CHOH2. Ah, he said it would be here somewhere. He's a leery old cove, is my old Sarge. How did he know? Oh, obvious. If you've done a bit of detective work, that is. Uh, Mr. Mosscrop gave it to the nursemaid Saturday night. She then gave it to Mrs. Prothero. Now, when she goes for a walk along the beach, she's going to take it with her, ain't she? She ain't so daft to leave it behind for her husband to find it. Clever. Ain't it just? Only, how did Mrs. Prothero come to be on the beach Saturday night? Um, yes. Uh, well, the sergeant and I are working on that one. Lord, what are you doing in this godforsaken place? You ought to be on the pier, darling. Oh, your colleague told me where to find you, Sergeant. Ah, Mr. Marshcroft. 
I'm rereading one of Dr. Prothero's published papers. Fascinating. I saw Mrs. Prothero. She was on horseback at Devil's Dyke. I've come direct to you from talking to her. Have you now? You must be hungry. Yeah, it's a fair walk from here. Let me get you a plate of these. Look, I don't know whether you heard me, Sergeant. I saw Mrs. Prothero. I spoke with her. Well, you're luckier than me. I went to Dorking to look for her. Uh, you mean you knew she was alive? Well... New is putting it a trifle strong, sir. One can never be sure if anyone's still in their feet in this uncertain life, but I had reason to believe she might be, yes. Oh, I see. What was she doing on Devil's Dyke? Meeting Prothero? Oh, yes, yes. Apparently, young Jason was suddenly taken ill. That's why she left so hurriedly. Uh, but he's all right now. I'm delighted to hear But it. because of her hurried departure, she left certain articles of dress behind, and Prothero brought them to her in a knapsack. Did you tell her about the sealskin jacket? Uh, no, no. Well, it wasn't hers, was it? Uh, but I managed to convince her that she had a, a public duty to present herself to you, if only to show she was alive, and, and she agreed. But uh, uh, she doesn't want to be seen in conversation with you. It may get back to her husband. Oh. Uh, yes, yes, he's forbidden her to talk to you. Apparently, your lunch together didn't leave too favorable an impression on him. But uh, if you could be on the downs at 10 o'clock, a clandestine meeting, eh? You got me at it now, Mr. Moscow. Handsome of you to come all this way to see me, ma'am. Mr. Moscow told me you thought I was dead. I hope this reassures you, Sergeant. I believe you own a black sealskin jacket, ma'am. Yes, I do. But I don't see what. It, it was dug up on the beach. Dozens of women own sealskin jackets, Sergeant. Bought from Fremantles of Dorking? I visited the shop yesterday. They know you. Heaven's sake, I... What is this all about? Mrs. Prothero, you know as well as I do that the woman murdered on the beach was your servant, Bridget. She was wearing your jacket. She probably borrowed it when she found you fast asleep. Now, this is just nonsense. You took the sleeping draught early. Bridget returned from seeing Mr. Moscroft, found you out to the world, borrowed your jacket, probably dosed Jason with laudanum. She gave that tiny child laudanum. Not laudanum, ma'am. I misled you there. I had to be sure that you hadn't seen the formula. It's obvious you hadn't. We found it at the scene of the crime on the beach. You must think me very deceitful, Sergeant. Were you hoping to avoid a scandal? smallest suggestion of anything improper. It's enough to destroy a medical practice. I mean, who's going to consult a doctor whose name's been even mentioned in connection with the murder? Oh, I know my husband and I weren't directly involved. But that wouldn't matter. Everything would have come out. His philandering, my dependence on a sleeping drug. Oh, dear God. Dear God, is it so unforgivable that we should have tried in our clumsy way to have concealed the fact that servant was probably your woman on the beach. I'm in no position to forgive, ma'am, but I understand. Bridget, terrible end to a young girl's life. You will find her murderer, won't you? Oh, yes, ma'am. Depend on it. What of your visit to Miss Samantha Floyd Whittingham, Thackeray? Uh, well, according to my instructions, I proceeded to Lewis Crescent, where I arrived shortly after 11. I was told that Miss Floyd Whittingham was at breakfast. But I stressed the seriousness of my business. And eventually, I was thrown into what I presume would be the breakfast room. Where was it, in fact? A uh, bedroom. A bedroom? How do you manage it, Thackeray? Where was Miss Samantha, then? In bed. She got a boiled egg on a silver tray. She didn't give me the impression of being at all discomforted by my presence. You mean she didn't disappear screaming under the bedclothes? No, Sarge. <laughs> she collaborated the doctor's story entirely. Did she volunteer anything else about him? Well, only that he's always behaved very proper. His wife doesn't understand him. What's your opinion of Miss Samantha? Well, I don't know what she's like dressed, but believe me, she's a stunner in bed. I believe you, Thackeray, but I shouldn't bandy it about in quite those terms if I were you. 
Well, now, I suppose there's still the possibility of some complete stranger murdering Bridget. But in my experience, that sort of killer doesn't go to all the trouble of cutting up the corpse and feeding it to crocodiles. No. I think between us, we've met the murderer. Well, I doubt if it's Samantha Floyd Whittingham. No, Samantha doesn't sound to me like the sort of woman who's handy with a cleaver. I shouldn't think Mrs. Prothero is either. The doctor. Except that he never left Samantha's side all evening. Then it has to be Muscrop. I mean, have you ever come across a man who goes on holiday with a bag full of telescopes and binoculars? Eccentric, but there's no harm in it. When a spyglass settles on a married woman and won't move off, I'm not so sure it is harmless. Men of his age and his kind, they get strange notions in their heads, Sarge. Hello, the ginger beer. It's another tough. I reckon through no fault of her own that Mrs. Prothero inflamed his animal desires and, uh, well, it leads to unfortunate results. That's a very engaging theory, Thackeray. Oh, thank you, Sarge. I hadn't thought of it like that. No, Sarge? No. Lend your ear to this. August 1881, Hove, criminal assault upon a minor, one Matthew Hawkins, not brought to court. December 1887, Eastbourne, indecent assault upon a 17-year-old servant girl, Jane Brett, not brought to court. June 1888, Eastbourne, attempted murder of Jane Brett by strangulation, not brought to court. That's it, Sarge. We've got him this time. We ought to run him in immediately. Ah, no, that wouldn't do. Why not? Well, it's not a criminal record, Thackeray. None of these cases was brought to court. No more of a school record. All this information came from headmasters. Nothing like a small private school for hushing up a scandal. You mean the uh, doctor's elder son? Guy Prothero. Servant at the doctor's house in Dorking gave me the names of the schools, and the local police got the truth out of the headmasters. Torturing animals, bullying. Then as he got older, he turned his attention to women. And attack this girl, Jane Brett. She's fortunate to be alive. Bridget wasn't so fortunate. Hey, he's as mad as an actor. Guy's last headmaster urged his committal to an institution for the mentally deranged. Dr. Prothero promised that would be done. You don't reckon the doctor dismembered the body, do you, Sarge? Difficult to say. It didn't look like a doctor's handiwork, but then Prothero ain't fool enough to give himself away as easily as then. You got the boy in custody, then? Guy and his father left Brighton early this morning on horseback. Well, it's what? all right. The police all the way from here to Dorking have been alerted and they're being followed. Yes, but shouldn't you have clapped the derbies on in the moment you got these reports? I had to be certain that Mrs. Prothero had taken a sleeping draught that Saturday night. You see, if it was true that she and Guy had played cribbage till 11, Guy couldn't possibly have killed Bridget. Because death occurred between 9.30 and 10.30. Come in. Telegram for you, Sergeant. Thank you. The two stopped off for lunch at the Fortunes of War in Horsham. Good God. What is it? Guy Prothero, after an attack of asthma, died at 1.14. Died? Ah, oh, there must be some mistake, Sarge. They mean dined. I'd believe you, Constable. If you didn't go on to request my instructions regarding the post-mortem, My condolences, sir. But I'm bound to say that if your son had lived, I would have arrested him for the murder of your servant, Bridget. Probably by strangulation. I'll uh, get the plates and things set aside, Sarge. Yes, all right. What is this for? To analyze the remnants of the meal. My son died from a chronic attack of asthma, not food poisoning. Well, we'll see if the post-mortem agrees with you, sir. It will, that I assure you. Any needle marks on the body, Thackeray? You won't find anything. I didn't administer an injection. That's a pity, sir. Otherwise, you might have been able to save him. At our little lunch, your son complained of the way you handled injections. Like a punt pole, he said. That injection contained atropine, if my notes are correct. Yes, I gave him atropine because of a sudden attack of asthma. That would have been in the early hours of Sunday morning. After he had murdered Bridget. No needle marks, Sarge. 
Would you like to tell me how Guy's death was induced, sir? The boy's death could not have been induced, Sergeant. Oh, I think it was. It's all too convenient, Doctor. Guy dying before I could arrest him in a small hotel miles from anywhere. Were you hoping to sign the death certificate yourself? It would have been perfectly natural for me to do so. Does the word interval mean anything to you? Interval? The interval between injections. <laughs> uh, you're not making sense, Sergeant. Two weeks ago, Bridget was murdered. I reckon that in the early hours of that Sunday morning, you decided that your son had to die. But you had to wait a specific time before that could happen. Or have you forgotten your paper on injections? And the problem resulting from sensitivity to certain vaccines? If I have, I'm sure that you will remind me. You quoted from a German paper on the subject of vaccines. This particular vaccine was given at two weekly intervals. The patient died, with symptoms identical to an attack of asthma. But he died only after being given the second injection. That two-week interval is crucial, isn't it? What was your son sensitive to, Doctor? Pollen. Pollen? Well, now, suppose your son, on that Sunday morning, had been injected with pollen. What would have been the result, do you think? I'm quite neutral. The substance would have affected the breathing, not the blood. But if a second injection of pollen had been administered today, wouldn't the effect have been as sudden and violent as if he had been given strychnine? But you haven't found any injection marks on my son's body. No, that's right. Would the pollen have to be injected a second time? No, pollen is readily absorbed through skin tissue. Would that be impossible to detect? Quite impossible. Because we're dealing with tenths of a milligram. This is all hypothetical, Sergeant. Guy didn't coat himself with pollen. There are no flowers in the dining room. Hmm. Snuff. Snuff? Your son took snuff, didn't he? He certainly did that day at Mutton's. You could easily have put pollen into his snuff box. I have the snuff analyzed, Sergeant. It's a waste of time, isn't it? I must say it's as neat a way of ending a fellow human's life as I've come across. A doctor's way. Or a father's. The boy would have killed again had he lived. What future was there for him? There's a saying in my profession, Sergeant. Extreme remedies are most appropriate for extreme diseases. Well, I think we'd better make a move toward the station. The railway? Or police? I'll never be able to prove my case against you in a court of law. Unless you decide to make a confession, that is. I think we've just got time to Catch the 623. Young man, you've been a great help to me. Bye-bye. 